Black River State Forest Pigeon Creek Campground. Let's go take a tour. Welcome to Pigeon Creek Campground in Black River Forest State Forest. Um, I'm going to show you around this campground, show you what beautiful place this can be. You've got a gorgeous little beach here. It's kind of brown and it, your legs kind of disappear in the water pretty quick. Um, so it's not a very popular campground because it also doesn't have a lot of amenities. This is a tent campground for the most part. There are a few sites where you can fit a pop-up or truck campers can certainly fit in there. But this is an old school campground meant for camping, for tenting, with uh, just pit toilets, there's no showers. I think the only water here is with pumps. So we're gonna take a look around. And, but first, look at this beautiful water out here. You can bring your kayak or your canoe, go wander around out there for, for a little bit. It's not, it's not that huge. Um, it is electric motors only is a restriction on this. They've done a beautiful job of grooming this beach. It is absolutely gorgeous. So way underutilized if you're looking for a place to cool off. However, I happen to be here right now and it is about 65 degrees. So people aren't clamoring for the beach right now. It was like 80 when I left home today. But let's take a quick look at the water here. And you can see what I mean about the coloring in there. It looks kind of funky, but it's actually very nice. And this beach can also just be used for day use. We've got plenty of picnic tables and grills here all along here. So it's not just for the campers and there's plenty of beach here for everybody. And don't forget if you get out here to take a moment, come over to the selfie stand, show off your selfie skills, put your phone in the little ledge here, point it out there, get yourself in the shot. Because remember, Wisconsin looks better with you. So there's a nice info sign here along the beach. For one thing, it gives you kind of the rough water depths here. So this is not a very deep lake um, out here. So from the beach here, two feet, four feet, two feet. I think the most it says is six feet. We also have a little note over here why the water is brown, uh, tannic Tannic acids leach from where the oak and tamarack trees and asparagus moss grow during the summer. Beach waters in the state forest are sampled weekly, unless posted is safe to drink, not or safe to swim, not for drinking. Um, but it is a safe beach to swim in. Now we've also got some trails out here. So let me just give you a quick little book. Look here. The beach is over there. And I got this straight shot along here along the edge. So let's look at the trail system. So here's the beach, here's that edge. And then there are bike trails that go off from here to a much bigger area. So there's plenty to explore. You can bike it or hike it if you want. That's two, that's almost three miles out that way. Um, almost two miles off that way. So you can go wandering for a bit here. There are a lot of other trails in the area in the state forest here. A lot of them are for ATVs. The ATV trails in here are extensive. So if that's your thing, this is a great place to come. And this campground, like I said, is a pretty quiet one, but it does not have room for you and your trailers for your ATVs. And that may be why it's sitting so quietly out here. Let's go explore the campground. All right, give you a little sense here. Black River Falls is over here. This is all Black River State Forest. We are down at Pigeon Creek State Campground. Now, it is outside of Milston is the nearest town per se. There's not much there. Um, this is 94, this is 12. So you actually get off, come off on O, 
take a side road and come up this road to get to the campground. All of these in purple, that's all ATV trails and there's a parking area for that specifically and they go off all the way up to the other campgrounds. Now this particular place is very isolated. So I'm going to show you here. That's the road I came in on. Nothing down that way. I come around to the other side. Road goes off that way. Nothing down there. Nobody on this road. It is a very quiet location with a small, friendly family campground. From the entrance road, straight ahead of me is the lake, the little uh, Pigeon Creek Lake or pond. I'm not even sure what to call it. I guess they call it a flowage. And up ahead here we have our entry house and there is firewood available and you can self-register here. Uh, there's nobody here usually at the little hut. But over on the right here, I got firewood, $5 a bundle, information, signs. It says to self-register over there, but I don't even see that. So I guess you're going to be making a phone call to register. So let's go take a look around. This is, there's two main loops. You can see I have a water pump on my left. That is pretty much the main source of water here. There's another one over by the beach. Now let's take a look. Uh, so the road is just over to my right. I don't think that's an issue at all at this campground. Here's 201. It's actually one of the bigger ones. And I think it backs up to its neighbor over there. So if you're sort of sharing, and we'll figure out which one that is later. So you can share that with a larger family. We do have some stagnant water right here, so do bring the bug spray. This is 202. These are not very big. There's not a lot of room for equipment. There is no power out here. And like I said, they're just pit toilets. There's some more stagnant water there. 203 is very small. Barely get your car and a tent here. 204 is a little bigger. Uh, last year I came here with a family. We brought the not only the car but our trailer and our tents. So we had the trailer to bring our kayaks with us to go enjoy that. And this one is right next to the vault toilets. 205 goes in a little bit. Some room for tent. 206 kind of snakes back a little bit. Still not huge. I got some neighbors here in the next one with bark barking dogs at 207. And this is the first time we have something on the right. So 209 is over to my right, 208 on my left. They're all very wooded sites. Good cover from above. Pretty good cover between the campsites. That's 210 right over here. That's actually one of the larger ones. And we are going to go on the loop to 230 to 238. We got a vault toilet as we make this merge. Got a little bit of a gap. We'll start on the right at 230. So this one, they specifically want you to park up front and tents in the back. They do not want you driving back in there. They have put up barricades. It may be a little soft too. Same thing with 231. You only have room to park up front and then you stay in the back. They don't want you pulling all the way in. Same thing with 232. You have barriers. 233 also has the barriers. These are all on the outside of the ring. 234, the same thing. It's fairly large here. You could actually probably get a pop-up and your vehicle here and then have tenting room behind. 235 you might be able to do side by side a pop-up and a vehicle and then your fire ring in your tent spot. Uh, 
let's see I think I got my Ranger on my right at 236 right now cleaning it out let's go look oh and we are already at the end of that little loop that's the end of the loop I have 237 here again with the barriers so they really want these to be tent sites back here or small equipment 238 again has barriers to keep you from going all the way in and we're going to come out of that already and that loop you have to come to the entrance to get to the vault toilet all right 211 is here at the junction it's actually fairly large nothing restricting you from going back all the way back in there 212 is a pull through but it is a tight turn so it's not like you know a big RV pull through you go going around these trees here and it's a pretty quick turn let's see I got 213 on my left which is a very small one um, not a very deep site there. 214 has another pull through and room for tents. So you got a bit of extra room there to play with. 215, very small, uh, compact little sites. These are all compact little older style sites. They're not meant for big rigs. That was 216. I got 217 on my left. And 218 is another little pull through again going around the little trees here that's 217 over there there's quite a bit of room on 217 to be able to put something if you needed to uh, we got our trails to the pit toilets over there this is the back side of the pull through 219 backs up to the pit toilet uh, 220 is another one of those pull through sites 221 is the uh, disabled use site, the paved one. Let's see, I think we're done with the pull throughs. Now we're to 222. And I'm not going to show you the next one because there's somebody in it. So 224, I'm not going to show you. 223, uh, they really want to limit you how far in you can go, but the trees are kind of in the way anyway. Or maybe that's a barrier between sites. That might be what it is. Okay, 226 on my left here, which kind of shares with the one over behind it. But like I said, there's just, you know, a couple post barriers to say your space, my space. 225 tucks back in over here. So that'd be a back in site. Now we're up by the lake right now. So 227 here and 228 over there you can see the picnic table back up to the parking area for the beach but they're the most convenient to the beach and I would guess it's 228 see over here you see the two fire rings and the two picnic tables hiding back there let's zoom in there so these two sites uh, one on the far side as you enter and one on this side 228 back up to each other so that would be a good combined family site if you want more room and again it's very close to the beach again the only water source is right here at the pump and 229 here fairly big it's actually a pretty big site here down by the water Okay, let's go take a look over here I just past the garbage and you pull in and this is the parking area for the beach and the trailhead if you want to take those biking trails and there is another water pump up on the hill as well as more vault toilets so here is the map of Pigeon Creek campground you got that entry road that comes in out here Pop in over here, you come in, the beach is right here with a parking area for that, with a trail head going off from there. And then it's really not that large. You've got this first loop here with this little extension loop where they really want it to be just tents out there. Now I 
noted that these sites over here by the water just seem bigger. What I think the reality is, is they're the same size. It's just that these have been used more, that the vegetation is so beat down that it's all pad. Back here, you have a lot more vegetation between sites and they haven't been worn down like they have been from people running back and forth amongst these sites. So it's 201 and 228 pair up well because the vegetation between them is completely gone and 229 and 227 the same thing and those are easy to get to the beach so apparently this area had been pretty much farmed and logged to death and then in 36 the civilian conservation corps kind of dammed up this place and created a pigeon creek flowage which was a habitat for ducks and geese and created what we have here now from what was basically destroyed land from from bad farming um, partially because this is mostly sandy soil area part of the state so they redid things created this area here with this beautiful waterway to play on so Pigeon Creek Campground is a nice little campground within the state forest here. Um, there are two other campgrounds to explore. Um, those I'll show those in, in other videos. Uh, and this one gives you this really nice quiet little pond, lake, flowage, whatever you want to call it, that they've created here. You can wander off that way and around by the beach all the way out here and then there's this little passageway that takes you into another little side section back through here and this runs along the nature trails we have this trail which is basically part of what I would consider the dam that has created this body of water that heads off it's sort of a berm and then behind me here I have some nature trails which are actually also bike trails they're not difficult bike trails it's all pretty flat here so you can easily just go riding off in the distance here so if you find these videos useful please like the video if you have experience here please comment down below tell us about your experience here and if you find what i'm doing here useful please subscribe to my channel and you'll also be able to see other campground reviews i do and I try to be as detailed as I can, show you the sites, not just say, here's the map. I want to show you what the sites look like so you know what to expect when you come on out to a state park campground, or in this case, state forest campground. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, and I'll show you a few little nature shots.